Thank you. Hello. My name is Tori Christman. I was in Scientology for 30 years. And as Vaughn said, I left four and a half years ago, and I will tell you about that. Um, I want to say a couple things before I get started. Um, I used to come to meetings like this. In fact, I went to see Steve Allen. Scientology sent me there to find out if Steve Allen mentioned Scientology as a cult. And it just happened that time he was actually on something totally different. But they do send people to meetings like this. I've been to many of them while I was a Scientologist. And usually the intention is to either distract the speaker off of the subject or degrade the speaker, you know, put them down, say things that make them look bad, etc. And Vaughn and I have agreed that's not going to happen here, and if anybody gets into that, we're going to ask you to leave. So he already mentioned it, but I just wanted to say that's where I come from, because I come from experience on it. I know they do it. We spoke last weekend, and they had people there saying, you know, Tory Brocker promises. And, <laughs> and I'm like, I'm not a Scientologist. Right? But, you know, they, that's their trip. So anyway, I wanted to say that. Secondly, I want to say I do like most Scientologists. People ask me all the time, they know Scientologists who are good people. I say, I do too. I love my old friends. But because I woke up, because of people like you who are skeptics and critical thinkers, all of my friends can no longer speak with me. And my husband of 27 years divorced me. And that's pretty heavy. And I'll tell you more about that. But it's like, Personally, I'm coming from, I have many people that I love that are Scientologists, and they're not bad people. The people running Scientology are a different thing. And they do very, that's what helped me wake up also, because I started seeing some of their top secret things at the top, and it was like, well, this isn't, this isn't what I got into Scientology for. So anyway, I wanted to make that clear. And the last thing is that these are from my own personal experiences for 30 years. So it is about Scientology, but it's from my experiences, okay? All right, and the last thing is I did have a little bit of a procedure on my face, so that's why if I look a little funny, that's from that. And I had a family emergency, so I'm, I'm trying to do the best I can, but please bear with me, okay? All right, great. So the first thing I wanted to do is <coughs> explain to you, people ask me all the time, how'd you get into Scientology? How many people here, have any of you read Dianetics? Raise your hand. Okay, some people. Have any of you ever done Scientology courses? Okay. All right. Okay, so usually as one person, you know, you learn a lot when you get out. And I spoke to some professors who had studied cults, and they said cults don't, people don't join cults, cults find you. And that's exactly what happened with me. I, a little background on my history, I grew up in a, a really nice suburb north of Chicago called Park Ridge. Very happy, doing great, you know, grew into being a teenager, one of those people that got molested, so that really screwed me up. Then my parents, my dad was in the Hall of Fame, the Football Hall of Fame, for playing for the Chicago Cardinals in the 60s, broadcast with Kurt Gowdy on NBC. We lived near O'Hare. A lot of the 747s started flying close to our house, and my mom and dad said, well, let's build our dream house. We'll move up to Lake Forest. Well, Lake Forest was like these super rich, super snotty people, and we lost all of our friends overnight, moved up there, and I remember I was raised a Catholic, and I remember, I remember this day to this day. I was walking in a church, and I saw all these pictures of these older ladies playing harps. And I thought, you know, the idea of sitting around playing harps for the rest of eternity with a bunch of old bats is <laughs> horrible, right? <laughs> and then all my friends are going to go to hell anyway. I knew that. So I thought, party on! And that was... <laughs> And all, I swear to God, all my parents' moral codes, I mean, that they taught me went down the drain. And I was like, fair game. You know, I was just like having a great time, wild thing. And I, I was a crazy person, I admit it. And I, and I, because I was at the top of this ladder of success, quote unquote, that people were working through in Park Ridge, and here are all these millionaires who are very unhappy and like, well, I've got my Jag outside, what are you driving? And I'm like, who gives a shit? Pardon me, pardon me. Pardon me for those filming, you know, I do have a little bit of a bad mouth. That's from Scientology, they all swear all the time. So, <laughs> they do! <laughs> Truck drivers. Okay, so anyway, I've tried to whittle it down, but pardon me, if, if you have delicate ears, you better leave. But, <laughs> but anyway, I forgot where I was, where was I? <laughs> you were a 
What is it? You are shouldering with the wealthy. That's right. Okay, so thank you. That's one of the things that happens to me. I talk about trees, I get off on the leaves, and I forget where I was. So just bear with me, and I'll have to, you can be my supporter on that. Re remember the tree. Okay, so I'm in Lake Forest, I'm around the snotty people, and I'm like, this isn't happening, right? There must be something better. And that was the beginning of me kind of on my own personal quest of, there must be higher than what everybody else knows. There must be something better. Okay, so that happened. I'm on my little quest. I'm studying Eastern religions, which if any of you have read them, they, they sound good, but for me, they were very hard to apply. You know, I'd get mad at somebody. And I was like, I, I, I don't love this person. You know what I mean? <laughs> I can't love them. I'm mad at them. Okay, so long story short, I go to college. I leave college. My parents are big on you. Got to go to college. I'm like, I don't need it. I'm, you know, I'm me. You know, just like now I tell kids all the time, get trained in something because I was one of those bozos who was like, oh, I know better than everybody else, right? So in and out of college, finally go to San Francisco, become a hippie, do some drugs, which of course Scientology always says, she's a drug addict now, you know, which that was like 1968 or something like that. But to them, that's right now. But anyway, but I'll tell you that anyway, because I want to tell you any of the bad things they'll say about me so you understand. So that was in 68. I did some drugs as a hippie. And I still was looking for this person that I thought was it. And I went to a college. One of my college friends said, oh, you've got to try heroin. It's the greatest thing. So I did it one time. I got hepatitis. My poor parents, who had, it had just been one thing after another. Tori's this, Tori's that. Now they've got a fly me back from San Francisco to Lake Forest. I'm in a Lake Forest hospital, and all these snotty people come in going, oh, what a shame, Tori Christman, you did drugs. You know, and I'm like, I hate these people. You know, I'm like Homer Simpson, you know, ah. But, but you know, I'm trying to be cool, and finally these two guys come in, and this is a true story. I mean, they're, they're actually, this was the book they gave me. They're really nice, and they come in, they got their little Dianetics book on their shoulders, and they're like, Wow, hi, you remember us from high school? And I'm thinking, yeah, you're the rich jerks that I don't like, right? <laughs> but they were really nice. And my parents had a lot of money. It wasn't that I was against money. It was I was against the exclusive snottiness kind of stuff, which ended up being in Scientology at the top of their pyramid. But I didn't know that for 30 years.